You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. you. Hey everyone, welcome. Welcome, welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob, and this is episode number 453. Thanks for hanging out with us, guys. And in case you missed it, in episode number 451, we gave away an annual membership via a drawing for people that had questions in from 401 to 450, and we're doing it again. That's right. We're yeah. going to keep that rolling. I kind of get into ruts, but I think this is a good rut. So from 451 to 500, which that's going to be quite the milestone. Wow. Anybody that asks a question that gets played on the air on the podcast will be put into a drawing and will receive an opportunity to win an annual membership. We should do something special for 500. We definitely should. Like have a huge podcast in the middle of a flying field with drones flying over us. We will definitely do something cool. If you guys have ideas, throw them our way. Hey, why not? Yeah, we'll why listen. Not? We got to figure out when episode 500 would be. We can do that. Anyway. Anyway, guys, also, this podcast wouldn't be possible if it weren't for our sponsors, Videoblocks. Videoblocks is a subscription-based HD stock footage site. So if you need stock footage for any of your videos, you're producing marketing content, real estate videos, maybe you want to show Albuquerque or the city that you're filming in, you want some establishing shots, and you just can't get them in your collection, you need them last minute, check out videoblocks.com forward slash drone, where mm -hmm. you can save $50 on an annual subscription fee. Now, here's the thing, hundreds of thousands of HD clips, one price for the year, unlimited downloads. Yeah, and as a drone you listener, that price is 50 bucks lower than the regular price. Yes, you really have to check that out, especially if you're producing videos all the time. Having uh, that extra stock footage is really killer. And I'll be honest, Rob, you saw a commercial I did recently. I got a phone call from this group I had never heard of before, willing to pay me a, a large sum of money to hmm. make them a, a, a sizzle reel. And I made the entire thing out of stock footage. No way. Yeah, wait, I showed it to you, remember? I do remember that, but I didn't realize it was 100% stock footage. Well, there was some motion graphics in there, yeah. but it was all stock footage. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of you have been out there spending a lot of money trying to get stock footage into your videos, and you don't need to do that. No, and here's the thing. I made the mistake of spending hundreds of dollars, hundreds of dollars on that video uh, with for stock footage, and it, it could have cost me 100 bucks, but... Video blocks wasn't a sponsor yet, and I yeah. didn't know about them. <laughs> so. But now we do, and now you use them all the time. In yeah. fact, upload your own footage there, which you can do as well. So, videoblocks.com slash drone. Check them out. And here's the question brought to you by Video Blocks. Hey, good morning, guys. How you doing? My name is Brian, and um, I just came across your website a couple weeks ago, and I'm thoroughly impressed with the service that you're providing the community. I think it's just absolutely awesome. Uh, I will be joining. I um. I just had a major, major crash crunch because I lost two major clients in a different business. Um, but I'll be over that very shortly. And one of the first things I'm going to do is join Drone U. Um, it's just too valuable to pass up. You can clearly see that with the free content that you put out. A uh, quick question. You guys have mentioned, um, as an example of building a portfolio of um, say approaching a car dealership and offering to film at their dealership for free and giving them the footage um, and that will also provide you with uh, something for your portfolio but my question is how do you convey the value of that to the car dealership again using them just as an example um, are you providing them with just raw footage are you providing them with a commercial or an ad um, how would they know what to do with that footage in other words, how would they perceive the value of what you're giving them and what format are you providing to them? Because uh, I can imagine that they would have no idea what to do with raw footage. So are you providing a complete editing um, service also and giving them an actual TV ad or something else? Maybe you can explain it to me. Again, I appreciate everything you guys are doing and I am really looking forward to joining up. Thanks guys, have a great day. So, uh, Brian, thank you. Thank you very much for that question. It's a good question. Um, there are actually a lot of ways to go with this and a lot of ways to look at it, a lot of ways to approach the situation, a lot of variables. <laughs> I don't mean to be wishy-washy and say it depends, but it kind of well, does. Well, 
Uh, let me put it to you this way. You can nix many variables by the way that you speak to people and sure. how you speak to them and the confidence and conviction in which you do it. Um, this is a formula, though. So if you're going after car dealerships and you don't have any footage whatsoever, the best thing to do is to strike a deal with the marketing department of a dealership to give them free footage if you're going to do that. The only reason you're giving them free footage is because you're going to then take that footage, you're going to make a video that you can use for marketing purposes to go get other dealers. Now, if you're going to give the initial footage away, I would just give it away. I would not offer them an edited video. A great upsell is to say, here, I can give you the footage, whatnot. If you want an edited video, now that you see the power of this, mm -hmm. that's how you can initiate that first sale. You can turn that that right. you know first client into a sale, which is totally possible. I've seen it happen. I've done it myself. Um, that being said, if you don't make the upsell, on the first client, you're taking that footage and you're going to edit it all together to make it look like a car commercial or just pieces of footage to give examples of what could be done so you can take that to another car dealer and sell them on making a video. Now, there are a couple different ways to do this. You can sell a YouTube video, meaning you're selling them for online marketing. If you're going to sell them a video that's going to be played online, you have to give it to them in broadcast quality, which is 1080p at 5997, um, which is a very specific codec that you have to use. Mm -hmm. um, and you may want to talk with the local broadcasters. If you've got you know, s four specific news channels that everyone uses, call them and say, hey, what does your media deliverable look like? Because sometimes, who knows, it could be 5994. You know, right. you just, you don't know. And you want to have a codec that matches so your footage is as smooth as it possibly can be. That being said, if you're doing the initial job for free, the goal is to go to another dealership after that and using that initial footage to sell yourself. But you can sell yourself on the very first initial contact. <coughs> and the way that you do that is you offer them the footage for free so you get permission to fly. You give them the raw files, and then you say, look, I can edit this all together for you in a commercial if you'd like, and I charge normally you know, 1500 bucks to do that, however much it is. Um, and then when I go to the second dealership, it's like, and if you want me to fly and create a commercial for you, I can do that, and each commercial I would charge about 3500 Right. And I think something to keep in mind is that, and you alluded to it because you said talk to their marketing department. Uh, one of the things Brian brought up was, if you're going to give them raw footage, they're not going to know what to do with it. And I think you'd be surprised, particularly with some of the larger dealerships. Totally. They probably are going to have people that would know what to do with that. Yeah. In fact, what you might run into with the really large dealerships is they've already got that kind of stuff going on through national avenues. True. Um, and if you're having trouble <laughs> reaching out to the marketing department... Go to the dealership at sunset one day when it's closed, which is normally Sunday evenings um, or Monday evenings for that matter. Go out there, take a beautiful, super high res photo of the dealership and mail it as a postcard to the marketing mm -hmm. officer and say, want more beauty like this? Give me a call. And yeah. Tease them. Yeah. Tease them. Or even maybe a three by five or something, something yeah. a little bit bigger where it's going to look really amazing. Yeah. For sure. But again, um, I love the idea of you're giving sort of that basic level free and then offering to do something more yeah, for them to you, charge them. You can never give away your services completely for free. Right. There's got to be some upsell, some draw, some purpose. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Or at least an opportunity for the upsell. Because what we're talking about here is that you may ultimately end up giving it away, but it's going to be a very basic level. Exactly. Of and content. if they want more, do not bend over backwards. Just make it very clear in the beginning. Like, I will give you the raw video files. Just say that in the beginning. Be clear. I mean, I don't like it, you know, when I have to give up my information for something like an FAA license or something, and then they give out my information to other people and I'm sold mm -hmm. stuff, you know, because it's not clear at the beginning. If you're clear with people at the beginning, you can't get in trouble and they won't get nearly as mad. So yeah. uh, just be as clear as possible. Right. And so don't, for, go ahead. I was going to say, don't be too salesy. A lot of salespeople uh, try to push stuff under the rug and then bring it up last minute. That's how you end relationships very quickly. No, that's a really good point. I, I kind of wanted to get go a little bit different direction, but with the same subject. And that is from a creative standpoint for people that are listening and they're thinking, huh, dealerships, that's interesting. Creatively, how would one go about um, just creating something interesting 
in regards to the dealership? Well, there's a thousand different ways that you could do that, Rob. So let's give them five. Oh, no, I'm not <laughs> giving away my creative side. There's okay, no give, them, give them 15 through 20. No. Um, oh, come on. Dude, Give them you, one. You you got you got to be creative on your own. You know everyone's gonna do the whole lens flare across the windshield and fly low along all the cars to make it look like a dolly shot that couldn't be done with a dolly because it's you're going such a far horizontal distance, um, you know. But you can't be moving too fast because your shutter speed is probably not fast enough. You know. I mean, dude, there's so much you could do. The crane. Sh- I mean, just. Go to the aerial videography, the cinematic shots class on Drone U. Just go, there, there's so many you could do. It's 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 stupid. I mean, now with the Zoom camera too, I'm just having mm-hmm. a heyday with creativity. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm like, oh, I could vertigo this. I could fly in and Zoom at the same time and really trip people out. Like one of my favorite maneuvers is to fly up, roll right, yaw left, tilt down, zoom in at the same time. Literally all that right in. Because so you could do that very move at a dealership. Yes. Totally. It takes, if you're not used to that move, by the way, it takes some very serious practice. Well, sure. Try it 150 times at the park first, but. Well, there's a very specific formula that with a one person op that you have to do to make that shot work. Got it. So when you're trying to do zoom and manipulate the camera in a tilt fashion, mm-hmm. it takes two people or okay. very, very very smart usage well, of the camera and app. Then, and that makes sense. <laughs> but I, <laughs> no, I'm glad I asked the question because frankly, being more of the bean counter as opposed to the creative one in, in the group, um, I would not have imagined there'd be that many, but to hear you talk, it's like, just sky's the limit, no pun intended. Well, I mean, look at that video we did with Lamborghini, right? Where I'm like six inches off the back of the car (laughs) and you can see the shadow of the drone on the car. That's how close I am. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, like doing nice... that bird. And yeah, the the drone's (laughs) flying lower than the tallest point of the car at speed to give you guys an example. Uh, And then we did a nice reveal out to the side after that happened. I mean... No one would have ever thought of that but shot. that's kind of like hitting me. a hole in one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> you hit a thousand shots on a par three, and maybe you hit one yeah. on that shot. Maybe. Uh, it's just about trying different things, you know? Yeah. Like, you know, Jason used to make fun of me all the time when I first got into photography. He's like, you take so many photos. I'm like, yeah, I do. But if I don't take a lot of photos... I have nothing to review later on and learn from my mistakes or learn from doing something on accident. Yeah. Well, and storage of those videos and and photographs is so cheap now. Exactly. It's not a big deal. Yeah. So anyway, I hope that helped you out. If any of this information helped you out or you have a question, go to askdroneu.com, upload that question. But if it did help you out, share this podcast. Please leave us a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. It really does help us out and it helps other people out as well. And if you want to share this information to create a safer flying environment for everyone, we recommend and ask you to do that. But on that bombshell, that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. And I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You.